Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Seneca County Board of Commissioners meeting. Uh, it is Thursday, April 6th, 2023, and we will open our meeting with the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please, Bill. Dear Lord, please help guide us and uh, give us direction here as we go to discuss personnel, property, finances, and issues facing our great county here. Uh, please help us to do your will and to watch out for one another. Uh, please protect us and the ones fighting for our freedoms across the world. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Roll call. Commissioner Paradiso? Here. Commissioner Schuff? Here. Commissioner Franker? Here. So I will accept a motion to approve the digital audio recording of our previous board <coughs> session on Thursday, March 30th, 2023 for our regular uh, meeting. So move. Second, Commissioner Franker. Roll call. Commissioner Franker? Yes. Commissioner Schuff? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. And uh, uh, we're going to start our meeting off with uh, Judge Schuff and uh, he's going to talk about uh, indigent defense council, a few other things. We'd love to uh, acknowledge and, and want to do that. The presence of three of our four judges, Judge Alt, Judge Best, and Judge Schuff, thank you for coming over. We know you're in the middle of pivot court and uh, put you on the agenda first. So you have the floor, sir. Thank you for putting us first and thank you for Judge Alt and Judge Best for being here. Judge Meyer wishes he could be, but he's with family issues. I think his uh, daughter or someone's playing volleyball out of yeah. town so, or some sport. I, <laughs> I lose track. But he wanted to be here but could not be. Family comes first. And I think we all agree with that. So uh, i got two t topics. Uh, I'll start with, I think, the easier one of the two and uh, warm the commissioners up a little bit before I come in with the other one. Um, Thanks for the warning. <laughs> <laughs> we have, um, and I guess the best way is to uh, let you see a breakdown of our, who gets this for the commissioners? You, Barb, or you have two? <coughs> All right, you can each, you, you good? Okay. You want one? Well, I'm going to need one. <laughs> let, let me talk about Pivot uh, first. Uh, Pivot uh, is a program that's now in its sixth year. We passed our five-year anniversary in March of this year. We're in our sixth year, and uh, in my opinion, and uh, it is going very well. Uh, we are able to obtain grants. These are federal grants. SAMHSA is a federal grant. BJA, as you see, is a federal grant. OMAS is a state grant. Uh, we are able to receive grants for our program, and let me tell you, when you're dealing with federal grants, if they don't think the program is worthwhile, they will not give you the money. And uh, not only did we receive the money, we got an increase on our last BJA grant. It was at 500000 and they increased it to 750,000 so we could add a couple more people called community support specialists. So as you can see, we bring this, this is a yearly amount that uh, handles our, our pivot program. And I thought I'd let you know that because I have two contracts that need to be approved and, and signed. Um, one is for the new BGA grant and I have the contracts here. Uh, they've been, uh, approved by Judge Alt and myself and, uh, and by Derek Devine as to form. And you'll see that. The other is the um, OMAS grant of 250000 and this is really catching up. The grant goes from July to June, and we're, we're on the last one, so we're just catching up on some of the paperwork. But the other grant <laughs> is prospective. It starts July 1, uh, the seven hundred and. 50,000. So these are grants, or these are the contracts with Oriana House. We hire Oriana House 
to handle Pivot for us. They, they're their people. They're not Seneca County employees. Um, Oriana House basically uh, runs Crossway and has since 1999, our CBCF. They run Rigel Recovery Services, which is an outpatient facility. They handle, after the Adult Parole Authority uh, eliminated uh, uh, doing pre-sentence reports, we hired Orianne House to do the pre-sentence reports, and that's a grant also. In fact, they do it not only for Seneca County, but four or five other counties in the area, and it's stationed here in Tiffin. Yeah. They also handle our pivot program, as I mentioned. They also handle now our probation services. The parole authority remove counties from their providing free services, and we were able to get grants for that, and I'll pass that out. Um, so just giving you some background. Yeah, that's good to know. These are our, our grants for probation services. Who prepares these grants for you? Uh, Oriana Howe. Do you okay. work with okay. Mayor <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Okay. Um, again, I'm short one. It's okay. Thank you. Our probation services gets these grants, and Judge Alt and I have been working on this quite a bit these last couple months. Nice. Uh, the application is getting in for the July 1st to June 30th biannual budget state. We have been assured we will receive all this, okay? And mental health we've already received uh, for next year, or for the July 1, June 30th. I, I'm too used to a calendar year, but <laughs> the fiscal year. As you can see, uh, probation services, this is a yearly amount we get also, okay? So that's, now what does the commissioners do for us? You do, and we thank you. To have these grants, the governments, these are all state grants and one local. Uh, the first three are state grants, the last one's local. So all our grants, federal, state, and local, require that there be some local funds be involved and you provide that to us on giving us money for the urine drug screens and you give us quite a bit for that and you may wonder where what happens with that money well we go through 300 drug screens a week and uh, I'll just give you some statistics that we just shared today in our planning meeting the huh that's the room is shocked yeah 300 a week wow. yes and that's probably low. I always rather keep it on the low side than the high side. Um, and that's because everyone in Pivot has to be drug tested at least twice a week, and some are more, because they earned that right. And in uh, probation services, usually everybody's at least once a week. Uh, we had a weekend drop. That's where people are called, they have to come in, random. And in our pivot program, 37 people were called. 37 showed up. 35 or 36 tested negative. So it's a way to keep people involved in the program. We trust them, but we verify. And one way we verify, not the only way, but one way is urine drug screens. Another one is curfew checks. Another one is going to their home uh, and checking things in their home. So there's a lot of different ways. But you're in drug screens. You provide the money for the urine drug screens. And then we also have a pretrial services officer that gets involved in the case very at the beginning and you would provide those funds. So the local match, so to speak, for all these grants, you provide to us, Judge Alt and I, through our joint court budget. So if you are in a felony case, or in a house and the courts are involved from the day you're arrested to the day you're released from probation, should be probation. Now, prison's a different ball game altogether. And we know pretty much early on kind of the direction the case will go based on degree of felony, based on criminal record, based on a lot of factors. But they're involved with us from day one, pretty much, from the date of arrest. So that gives you an overview. You help us with that, so thank you. And that tells you what we're doing. I believe it's very effective. Um, so, anyway, two so, contracts to sign. 
And that's it. Can I, on these on the contracts? That's just a letter. Do we, uh, can do I give you the contract check? Or do we just, uh, yeah. Would you like them signed today? It does not need to be. Okay. If you want to take time. Resolution yeah. on yeah, for yeah, that's fine. Agenda. I just want to present yeah. to you, give yeah. you a, Perfect. a background on all those. Um, <clears throat> so I have three of them here. I don't know if you need three. I'll give you two. I'll keep one. Okay. We'll take care of it. Perfect. Yep. They have been approved by Mr. Devine. Thank you. Thank you. Where appropriate, they've been signed by Judge Alt and I. Uh, they've been signed by Oriana House. Just need your signature. That's it on those two. The last one is indigent council fees. Under the law, you said indigent council fees. Okay. What are indigent council fees? Indigent council is those lawyers that take care of cases where a defendant cannot afford an attorney and there is a potential for a jail term or a prison term is required in fact the 60th anniversary of Gideon versus Wainwright the United States Supreme Court case says that anybody that can face incarceration in this country has a right to a lawyer and if you can't afford one we pay for it okay um, so in our county, my guess estimate is over 90% qualify for indigent counsel based on the guidelines, the poverty guidelines that we get from the federal government. So 90% qualify for court appointed counsel. We appoint the counsel to do that. We have a short list. Why? It's tough work. Also, we don't pay very well. So what we would like to do and submit to you is increase the hourly rate for indigent counsel. It is in line with our surrounding counties. If you're an attorney and you can make more in Hancock County or Wood County or Sandusky County or Huron County, where would you go? It's a business decision. You're gonna to go to those counties. So for example, Huron County is $75 an hour. Now you think that's a lot, but when you think of overhead and running an office, and most overheads are 50%, it isn't that much for a professional. Huron County is 75, Sandusky County is 75, Wood County is 75, Hancock County is 75, and we're at 65. Now, what does this cost the county? Because I can see Bill Franker thinking about what's this cost the county right now i'm thinking it's too just uh, okay <laughs> mr Perry, they're all thinking yeah we're all thinking <laughs> right now under the current budget 100 percent of indigent council fees are reimbursed by the state of ohio it costs you nothing right now now what's the new budget going to look like we have been told the worst case scenario is that 90% will be reimbursed by the state of Ohio. Worst case, could still remain at 100. And that's a memo we got from the Ohio Public Defender's Office. I can share that with you. No one knows for sure that, you know, there's a lot of things that will go into the budget, the state budget over the next April, May, June. But by June, we'll know what percentage that is. We anticipate that it will be at least 90% to 100%. Now you're saying, how much are we talking about? See, I see you guys. So here we go. Is this exhibit A? <laughs> <laughs> uh, exhibit one. A is one. defendants. <laughs> oh, <right>. Exhibit <laughs> one. I stand corrected. Exhibit one. Now this is for all the courts, all the courts in Senate County. Not just Judge Huff's court, not Judge Halt's court not judge at best, all of them. Juvenile, <clears throat> Tiff and Foster Area Municipal Court, both common police courts. This is all the courts. Back when we had a public defender's office, those figures were higher. We, got, we eliminated the public defender in 04. Our budget for indigent counsel was probably close to 800,000 in 2004. The commissioners at that time and one judge agreed we don't need the public defender's office. It's cheaper to hire attorneys. As you can see, 
it has come down. I only had back to 06, because that's what the auditor's office gives me. Barb used to give me those figures. It has went from 515000 in 06 to last year was $295,000. I would ask you, if you think that figure's high, to go to Hancock County, Sandusky County, or Huron County and ask them what they're spending on indigent council fees. I can assure you that figure is lower than any peer county around. And if I'm wrong, you can come and say you're wrong and you owe me lunch. I'll be glad to buy you lunch if you find something lower. I think all the judges, all the courts do a great job in making sure we do appoint counsel that are appropriate, but we also watch what's being spent. And we approve the bills. That's a blank checkbook. Mm -hmm. No, it's not a blank checkbook. We have caps. We'll talk more someday about caps. Mm -hmm. But right now, that is the figure. Now it dropped down to 233 in 2020, and that's pandemic. You know, there was a little less uh, cases. But as you can see, that's it's been pretty consistent. It's pretty reasonable. And even if they went to 90%, you're talking a $30,000. Now, let's say you don't want to do this. Now, we've got to go further away to hire counsel. We might have to go to Marion. We might have to go to some other Mansfield. And most attorneys start charging after they leave their office, mm -hmm. it's going to cost more in the long run. So this is better to keep it as local as possible. We all have mostly local lawyers. Whatever fees are earned stay locally and we like that. But honestly, I only have five attorneys that do these right now. And one we may lose because she's running for law director, me. One is Frank Marley who's in his 80s. And then I have John Kaler, Tim Hoover, and then Alex Smith, who's from Bowling Green. We have to pull in somebody from Bowling Green. Now, Judge Alt and Judge Best may have a few different ones, but essentially we don't have many. And we're sharing our lists and trying to get people to do these cases. They're important. People's lives are at stake. And as a result, we well, you want good attorneys. And we need to pay them fairly. And since it's 100% reimbursed right now, and we think 90%, we'd ask you to consider a resolution um, to raise it to $75. Here's our letter. It is signed by all four judges. We all agree. It isn't like uh, Judge Schuff wants this. I believe Judge All can speak for himself, Judge Bass, and Judge Meyer. But we all signed the letter that said, Please raise it to $75 to keep us operating with local attorneys. If, if we need to go further away in the long run, it's, it's going to cost us money. So I'm open to questions. Judge Alt, maybe want to say something, Judge Best, regarding indigent counsel. I would just add Wyandotte County is at 75 I believe, now as well. So all of our neighboring counties are. And I'd like to see some of our court-appointed attorneys are going to other counties, you know, which takes away our ability to appoint them to uh, cases right here in Seneca County because they're running to Hancock County or Wood County. You know, this will better help us to keep appointing our local counsel because it is an increase. So, okay, right now, 65? 65. 65. Judge Best, anything? Because I believe Crawford County is up at 75 also. Okay. That would be every uh, every county. Because I know Huron, Sandusky, Wood, and Hancock are. I didn't know about the other two of Crawford and Wyandotte is. Everyone's at 75. And that's the first question we get when people are considering going on the list. What's your hourly rate every mm -hmm. time? And when they hear that it's not up in the 70s, we don't get a lot of success. So for uh, we are not meeting next week. Commissioners are off. We're meeting the following week. Can we put this on the agenda mm -hmm. for the following week, and then do some make it effective whenever you want. You know, <clears throat> yeah. May first, whatever you think is best. Yeah. We think it's important. And here's here's another reason: all time criminal cases have time limits. The further we have to look for attorneys, that time period becomes really really important. 
uh, because constitutional rights are involved, there's time periods for every case, whether it's a M4 to a felony of the first degree, M4 being a misdemeanor of the fourth degree. So there are time limits are set by the Constitution and state law, and we have to keep those. We're having trouble finding lawyers, and I got trouble right now for trying to find a lawyer for a case. Um, and it's an F1. It's a felony of the first degree. And uh, it, it's difficult. And uh, this will help. It may not be the complete answer, but it will help. I'm going to open it up to the other commissioners if that's okay for any comments or questions. No, I did a nice presentation. I mean, it really well, uh, enlightened you know, my knowledge of what you know, we're looking for. So, yeah, no, it was. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. Anything? And just, just for the education of us up here and then the people watching, what is the threshold? Because I know you said 90% of the people can qualify for um, the indigent defense, but what is that threshold just for our own education? I, I, can't, I can't tell you. It's based on the number of people and it's based on in, that, in the home and the number how much income. Okay. Now, if we grant someone someone and then later we find out they really were making more money than that, mm -hmm. we can do a recoupment of fees. And I've submitted, I think, a resolution for that. We can have a hearing and tell them we they got to pay us back some. I was just, I was curious. But bo most of these people truly do qualify. Yeah. But it's based on federal guidelines. Gotcha. It's not something we come up with. We're based on federal guidelines. I see. Uh, based on what poverty levels are. But we. I can't. Cite those off the top of my head. I, yeah, just didn't know if there was a number. That's probably standard across what most of the federal guidelines are for. You know, all, all across 88 states in Ohio, I can't answer outside Ohio, but it's the same guidelines for all 88 counties. We appreciate the uh, update. I'll get you copies of this if you want it for public record. But uh, any, any questions else? of Judge Best yeah. or Judge Alt or any? myself? We'll be glad to answer them. This is great. No, I. Would it help you guys if we made it seventy five fifty so we're higher than the other counties be more be more attractive? Hey. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Joke. Joke. Just a question, yeah. Uh, that extra that extra, that extra, sounds, that extra You sound like you sound like the movie The Verdict, where the jury comes in, can we give them more than what Paul Newman asked for? You know? <laughs> extra twenty five cents an hour, yeah. Well, I think this is good. We'll some information. Yeah, we'll get some, you know, our heads around. Yeah. And if you have we'll any questions, next week, let any of us we'll know. Answer. We'll we'll answer them. If you have questions, we'll let you. It isn't anything that it benefits the courts, the justice system, yeah. and that's what we're here for. Um, Talk about pivot again. Great job. Maybe yeah. explain a little bit more how what time it starts and how people yes. can come in. And if you want to, thank you. We out. we meet every Thursday. Now the planning meeting is only open to those that are certified. You have to go through a rigorous training as judge bass just found out it's around 40 to 50 hours of training before you can come into the planning room and then we're limited to how many people there but everyone in the room has been certified as we call it in drug court operations uh, through the national drug court institute and dci we meet from 9 to about 10 15 usually we left early today uh, at 10 15 we start with men uh, we keep the gender separate. It, it seems to work better. At 10:15, we start with what we call status hearings. Well, we start with a graduation if we have one. That's not every week. We start with status hearings. Today we have 16 men on status hearings. We'll hear the progress they're doing. They're doing great. If they're doing really good, they get in the fishbowl. And then at the end, we draw one name out for a $50 gift card. That's part of the grant stuff. Anyway. So we do the 16 statuses, then we do an admission. We have one admission person coming in, a man coming in today into the program. So we'll have that admission hearing with talk to him and he explains all by himself. And then after that we do sanctions. That's where the judge leaves where he's standing or sitting and goes up on the bench and it's a little more formal, we're on the record. These are people that have violated the program in some way and we have talked about that in our planning meeting and we have what we're going to do. Um, and then we order that at the thing. And then that's, and then the women the same way. They're at start at one o'clock. We usually get an hour for lunch today. It doesn't look like we're gonna get an hour for lunch, but we'll, we'll eat some pizza somewhere along the line. And then we'll start with the women at one, same program. And then we're done 2.33 depending 
on how many are in the program. We're just now building our numbers up. Quite frankly, they went down last year as a result of visiting judges handling one of the courts. And our numbers went down. We didn't get the referrals. Uh, as I explained, municipal court is like an emergency room. It gets everything, okay? Judge Alt and I are more like an operating room. We get the scheduled stuff, we get the, you know, the broken arms, the heart transplants, whatever it may be. More serious, less cases. Or more serious, less cases. Emergency room gets everything that comes in from dog bites to barking dogs to bar fights to you name it. Most of our cases, referrals, come from municipal court probably 60 to 65 percent hmm. uh, because they see such a volume and like a Walmart theft I won't see because it's a misdemeanor but the Walmart theft <coughs> was drug induced they were stealing to feed their habit and as such that's person's a perfect one to come in to pivot and uh, deal with the drug because you deal with the theft, it's going to happen again. So you need to deal with the cause, not the symptom, the cause. So that's where we bring in the, we get more cases. So we were, our numbers are down, they're going back up. So some days we were there until five, but right now we're only there until 2.33. Are there any other counties that have adopted the model that we have here at Pivot Seneca County? Uh, not at this point in time. We may become a mentor court. The law changed. Uh, Senator Reinke was involved in that, or maybe it's still a proposal. The proposal is allow every county to do multi-jurisdictional drug courts. Um, our program was on a five-year pilot, which is, was going to expire. It was made permanent by the state legislature. So we are permanent now, multi jurisdiction, which means misdemeanors and felonies together. Different courts. Municipal court's a statutory court, we're a constitutional court. Just explain that a little more. But anyway, there's a law pending that allows anyone in the state of Ohio would like to do so, do so, to make it multi-jurisdiction. One drug court, instead of five different drug courts with five different policies and procedures. Now, large counties, it may be difficult to have one. But anyone our size or smaller, and that's half the counties in Ohio, this is, to me, an excellent model. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. Awesome. 1027. I, I've taken up. <laughs> We're good. We're, we're thinking <laughs> more than, so thank you. I thought 20 minutes, but. You know, you give a lawyer a chance to talk. <laughs> it's like a Baptist minister. Yeah. Right? And I don't get to as judge. I got to sit and listen. Like, but you know, this, uh, again, this is recorded, and it, this was very good. Uh, Anyone have any questions? So. Yeah. so we appreciate it. Again, Thank both you. court sessions are open. Not the planning meeting. Oh, right. But both court sessions are open to the public, and we encourage people mm -hmm. to watch and listen. Which floor do they go to? Mm -hmm. we rotate. We That's rotate. rotate. That's okay. why it's, it's good. But we're all there. Right. But I, I have been doing it for six months, so at the end of April, it will switch over to Judge Alt. And then Judge Alt will have it for 17 weeks, and then Judge Best, 17 weeks. I, I did the first 17 weeks of this year, plus we divide, Judge Kelly and I divided up last year's. The visiting judge didn't get involved from any court, so we handled it. So but even though I'm not in charge, right. okay, and I don't have the robe on, I'm in the audience. Sure. And I give Judge both judges the opportunity to say something, and hopefully when they're in charge, they give me an opportunity to say something and I deem it appropriate. And that way they know, these participants know, all three judges are involved. If we disappear, we don't know what's going on when we're back. You know, we have to be involved. And that's the way it's always been, that all three of us were involved, and, and it's happening now that all three of us are involved. And even though one's in charge, the other two have a voice. So when the public comes in, the security would know what floor to go to, or how do they? Yes, yeah. security will know. Yeah. Right now, it's on the third floor for the rest of this month, but it will go to the fourth floor starting in May. Mr. Brighton, I had a question. Yeah. Mr. Brighton, 
Uh, you made a statement that most thefts are from drug, drug related. Most what? Most of the thefts. I would say 80%. I didn't know that. In fact, almost 80% of all crime in Seneca County is drug influence or drug induced. Now, drugs could mean alcohol, an OVI, or, or you know, a bar fight. It could be any drug. And, and alcohol is a drug. So, yes, uh, my, my opinion, and this is based on. 25 years as a judge, and then before that as a prosecutor, 80% uh, now are drug-induced, drug-influenced crime. And that would include domestic violence, for example. Mm -hmm. There's usually alcohol involved. Yeah. Too much alcohol. Has that increased recently? I mean, with the amount of drugs, actual drugs? That, that is a great question. Because I so get used to things, I can't tell you what 10 years was like, if that figure has changed. My guess, it's moved up a little bit, but it's always been high. Because when people aren't under the influence of a drug, they usually act appropriately. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So I would say if it's moved up, it's only a little bit. But I, and my guess is when people were stealing before, they were in need. Okay, I'll give that 20% or they were financing their drug. Okay. And I would go with 80 in that one. Thank you. Jim, do you want to say something? Yeah, I just want to thank the judges. Thank you. They are breaking the cycle. Yes. And this mm -hmm. makes our community better. Yes. You know, the old saying is the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again expecting a different result. They are doing something break the cycle of incarceration, they get out, they do it again, they go before the judges, we got to stop that. And thank you, all three of you. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Well thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. We're going back court. <laughs> thank you. You want to sort of pizza for you? <laughs> you already in order. You already have order. It's already ordered, but you want to pay. Standing order. Yeah, right here. Okay. Yeah. It's all good. Come on in. Thank you, Judge. So we do have a sign-up sheet. Yep, I will pass. We have some bid openings, and uh, we're going to pass around. Uh, so do you want to do this? Uh, before each bid opening, pass the sheet around. Yeah, I'll do, so we'll do, uh, we'll do the first. chip first, and then I just want to make sure. Okay, so we are circulating the <coughs> sign up sheet for the chip seal project. Uh, bid opening, we're running a few minutes late. The judges were in here, so uh, I will turn this over to I'm just gonna go uh, make county sure administrator, no and we'll start when she's ready. Um, I will make copies of this for you. This is some really good information. You. you can get your back, you know, and I know you were writing, but oh, yeah. well, this I'm is really helpful. Verbatim. Right. <laughs> yeah. Nice job, Judge. Okay, over okay. to you. We're, we're past 1030, so I think we can begin. All right. LLC uh, in the amount of six hundred twenty-five thousand four hundred and twelve dollars and sixty-seven cents. So that's LI. allied. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 
The next bid I have is from Word Construction. Yeah, that is a total bid amount of six hundred twenty-nine thousand fifty-two dollars and thirty-five cents. Henry W. Bergman, uh, and that bid amount is And the last one I have is Unalliance, and that bid amount is $691,145.98. Okay, anything else? That is all the bids I have. So we will we will take these bids and give those to the engineer. Is that what we're doing? Yep. yep. And um, we'll, they'll be getting back to you. Thank you. We are uh, going to have another bid opening at uh, 11.45. 10, 10.45. 10.45. 10 yep. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, got it. <laughs> 10:45. So, uh, with that, we'll let you get your desk clear, and we'll jump into a few other things. So that's okay. <clears throat> Back on track. So, uh, if okay, we'll start. You ready? You want to go first, Commissioner Report? Sure. You're on deck. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Paradiso. Yeah, we had a busy, uh, busy week this week here at the commissioner's office. So last Thursday after our regularly scheduled meeting, um, uh, per request of the other two commissioners, we had set up a sort of subcommittee here to uh, work with ODOT here. Um, so we had representatives from FEDC, TSEP, myself, uh, Charlene from Regional Planning, Mark Zimmerman, our county engineer, as well as Lenny Klaus. Um, but we had discussed uh, projects. Um, we're taking our 2017 plan, dusting that off, looking at maybe making some changes to that or some revisions. But we're going to be taking that to the Transportation Committee through Regional Planning. So. Um, at this point, we're not planning on spending any money uh, at this point to uh, freshen up that plan, but we are looking into that and working with our local representatives and uh, some of our other electives to kind of see what we can get done and try to bring some more of that ODOT money here. So um, keep you posted as we move forward on those sorts of things. Also this week, we had a meeting here to discuss our future EMS building. So out in uh, Bloom Scipio, uh, Attica Reed, Venice, Republic Bloomville, um, we'll be putting up our uh, EMS building here, but we're discussing some future floor plans here. Um, I'll kind of save some of this for the other commissioners, but our goal is to have it up here before the end of the year, and I'll kind of let them dive a little deeper into that, but excited about that. We did have a good meeting with MBA engineers and uh, RCM architects. Um, also yesterday we had a regional planning meeting. We had some zoning discussions, uh, some zoning that's uh, affected Eden Township here and some of their land use plans. Um, we also uh, created a budget stabilization fund for regional planning. And also there was some subdivision regulation updates, but that was tabled. So um, I'll let some of the others touch on that if they decide to do that. 
Tomorrow we have a uh, opioid task force meeting. Uh, also have a radio interview tomorrow. We couldn't get in to do it today, so we'll have that uh, updated at 8 a.m. from WTTF tomorrow. And then uh, also had a uh, meeting this week with a uh, potential real estate developer, someone looking for space here in Seneca County, four to 5,000 square feet, um, bringing some jobs along with that. So had some good development meetings this week. And then also just want to give a congratulations and a shout out to uh, Tavern 19. There's a new uh, uh, tavern and uh, eatery opening up out in Bloomville. So I was excited to see the renovations that they're doing out there and I think they plan to open up this week. So. Congratulations to Aaron Gurnett and his family and partners and stuff, but uh, nice to see another uh, eatery and uh, establishment open up here in rural Seneca County. And then just lastly here, real quick, I'm not sure if you guys can help guide me on this, but um, I know Commissioner Kirshner had served on that CEO um, board or program. I know the commissioners have a spot on that. Um, I haven't made a whole lot of headway with that. I haven't had any notification for I've seen it, things on Facebook. Do you know who's in charge of that, who chairs that committee? Because I have not been approached You're talking about the, the young CEO? Susie Gleneke and, Mikey and yeah. uh, Pastor Gerlach, or, I believe, run, or, and Ed from North Central. But I think Susie runs it. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, Mike was previously on that board when I know when we divvy up our committee assignments at the beginning, the beginning of the year. Um, I was assigned to that committee, so I just was curious if you could reach out to because I haven't heard anything unless you guys have. Reach out to Susie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bracer, yeah, on Bracer, yeah. yeah and, and that spawned out of yeah. TSEP. Yeah. It was there was the entrepreneurship committee which Audrey Flood ran, and then it came out of that. So you might reach out to Aaron and, and reach out to Okay. 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 Yeah. I'm just curious. So um, I appreciate that. No, it's been a busy week, and uh, have a lot to get done yet. So yeah, been to their annual meetings, but uh, beyond that, I, I'm not, I'm not with it. I'll reach out to Aaron. Yeah. I'll reach out to Aaron. Good. All set. Okay. Thank you. Friday, uh, met with John over to the CSB building, kind of get an update on how they're progressing there at the, uh, the health department and cross and stuff on the wall there. Uh, working at, they're looking at, you know, some, some door issues and stuff and see if we can enable that around or whatever on that part of it. So uh, Saturday, uh, attended the uh, Project Lifesaver fundraiser. Uh, great event. They had a, a good turnout and uh, uh, that's the where they, they fund t for people to have a bracelet for anybody has dementia or kids that have uh, autism and stuff to kind of keep an eye so they don't drift too far away and a uh, great project it's uh, through the Lions Club is a supporter of that and stuff with it so Tuesday uh, uh, Tony and I was at the budget commission meeting and right after that we were at the board of revision uh, kind of reviewing some of the upcoming uh, stuff for uh, revision for the uh, auditor's office. So uh, Wednesday, uh, I was with Jamie and Barb here at the Corsa, the property casualty the insurance update. Uh, uh, I think it was a, a, a good news. Uh, the increase, we're going to have a slight increase, but it could be a lot worse than what it is with all the stuff happening here with uh, uh, storms and it could have been uh, substantially worse so so not bad at this point so um, and as Tyler alluded to Did we get uh, a final number yeah eight percent it was yeah yeah eight point zero five percent yeah which the that's um good. yeah, yeah of course I'd, um, across the board it was ten percent a lot has to do with the reinsurance portion of it it's been hard to get so a lot of big storm damage for public we're in a, a consortium county consortium both for our health benefits and our, our property liability insurance and if there's 60 members not everyone gets the exact same Correct. increase uh, we're all in it together but there's a formula and so just as in the medical side mm -hmm. our increase was less mm -hmm than it would have been for other counties that are in the oh, same yeah. program. Yeah. So that's a good thing, both on the medical side and, and on the property, and property side, side, liability side. Yeah. We were prepared for an increase this yeah. year just with what's going on in the market. But again, do we budget that, Barb? <laughs> okay. Thank you. So, yeah. <laughs> but that's good because so, I was yeah. not at that meeting. Right. I've been to the prior ones. But, sure. Yeah, no, it's good. Um, Thank you. As we alluded entirely <coughs> to, was a regional planning. All three of us were there last night at the meeting, and uh, uh, so we're working on uh, uh, updating uh, the subdivision. Get, we have some review stuff to do on that to get back for their May 3rd meeting 
on that part of it, and that's what I have. Um, good. I think that was the most of these things. I'll, I'll, uh, um, I don't have any report, I guess, to add. So with that, we'll come over. Right here. Oh yeah, we'll come over. I do have one. Yeah, oh, here. I want it. Yeah, thank you. I, <laughs> I've been asked asked to, um, and I wanted to do that when the judges were in here, yeah. the electeds. But Mr. Klein, you you'll see that uh, uh, this is National Government Month, and uh, that's where we were at last week, down in um, Cyrus, and uh, County Government Month. Sorry, Lee. <laughs> it's county government, but um, um, it's great. And it's an awareness that uh, there's a campaign all throughout the uh, state with regards to uh, county government, various types of government. We need people to get involved. We need good candidates. We need people to vote, and it's uh, it, it's 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 pretty cool. So, um, shout out there. Yep. Thank you. I did have something. You did. You. Are we <laughs> well, in we the? Uh, are we ready for the bid opening? We are. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, so we're now going to go to our second bid opening, the pavement marketing project. Uh, it's scheduled at 10:45. Sign up sheet is going around. County administrator will open the sealed bids. How many do we have today? Oh, give me one more. I think four as well for this oh, no. one. Okay. Sure. Four is yours. Yes, we have a total of four for this one. shuffle through these. Okay, so the first bid we have is Griffin Pavement Striping, um, and that is for Next um, one we have is from Duramark, and that amount is ninety-one thousand four hundred forty-one dollars and forty-nine cents. American Roadway Logistics. That bid total is $92,450. American Roadway Logistics. Last one we have is A and A Safety, and that bid total is eighty-four thousand two hundred twenty-eight dollars and sixty-six cents. Okay. Anything else? That was the last. 
That was the last. Okay. We good? Any discussion, anybody? Okay. Okay. Administrator's report. Okay. Multitasking. The board, <laughs> board bell's going to ring. Put the lights away. We got this. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I have a few things. Um, I had an email from uh, the sheriff this week requesting um, he would like for us to come down um, and do a tour of the facility and have a sit down. Um, meeting uh, just to go over some um, budget stuff that he would like to see um, done or some maintenance um, personnel I, I stuff so if that. you guys can take a look at your um, personal schedule and office calendar and we can get back a few dates that would work for everyone for that can we do it uh, <coughs> it, can it not next, next week, week is not good yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I found like we could come up with something and can we get with you yep absolutely looking at like the 17th yeah. week of the 17th and 24th yeah. probably we can make if that, that would work yeah. okay good we should go around lunchtime so he buys us lunch. I'll make sure to put that in the email <laughs> yeah. too. Although I, yeah, we'll see. Okay. Um, I have some good news from Kathy Oliver. I would like to read this email. Um, she had uh, the Greater Ohio Workforce Board came to tour the Ohio uh, Means Job Center and brought Williams County Commissioner and Williams um, CDJFS Director. William County is looking to develop their OMJ and uh, GOWB told them we were the best practice um, and that they should visit uh, Seneca County. So um, they visited Wood County as well because they're a best practice center as well. Um, but they were interested in discussing business services, funding and outreach. So they had a really good discussion. Um, and so Steve and Carol did an awesome job, she said, presenting. But um, just so you're aware, they were- That's awesome referred to uh, to go to, to Seneca County Job and Family Services um, because of their best practices out there. So I thought that was really good news. Really um, nice. Next thing I have, um, just finishing up some of the stuff out at the Ag Building. Uh, Jason from Restore Pro reached back out. Um, there's two options that we can move forward with kind of the restoration of the basement. Um, one is to treat everything in the basement, including the contents uh, that are down in the basement. The other would be to remove those contents, like the chairs, desk, doors. Um, they would scrape wood and cardboard along uh, some of the wood shelves and then obviously treat the walls. Um, so those two numbers came back today, or excuse me, earlier this week. Um, the one to just treat everything would be 5400 and fifty dollars and then to remove and then treat a little bit more work is ten thousand four hundred and fifty dollars so so when we <coughs> remove we don't put it back right? well, that's why you well, spent a little you bit out, out but you want to yeah. yeah. right. so ideally everything would be gone out of there that's you know yes. the so problem child down there so for the ten thousand yeah and that would actually put us in really good shape with the egg building right now yeah. um we've then you were there yeah. everything's yeah. good um john went out there last week and changed all of the air filters for the building um so i know they asked uh if they could get the duct work um cleaned i think we're kind of just sitting right now where to see where our next step with the ag building would be i don't know that that's a good step if we're looking to actually yeah, maybe take on the project of building so, so we, I think we, we do just not need a motion on this no you're just asking us sort of yeah just letting you know an update I, on the ag building so yeah, yeah. really for the tech for what's down there what to try to remove for the ten thousand dollars at the end of, because if you treat it guess what it, it, and it, it takes yeah. back again so that's what, what you think, think that if we're going to do it do it right yeah so we with the ag building uh that's a priority building for us to replace so we have the uh, ongoing um, cost-benefit discussion you know do we, we want to we have to have a clean safe building but we don't want to put too much money in it because we know we're going to raise the building in the next four or five years maybe sooner hopefully uh, build a new one so um, these discussions aren't going to go away right mm -hmm. but uh, so 
do we answer all your questions? Yep. On yeah, okay. I just wanted to make you aware that Thank there's you. still yeah. some stuff being handled out at okay. the ag building, but um, and I think John's kind of up the changing the filters out there every the 30 lands. days um we're going to take a look yeah, at it in know. 30 days if we look as if it does not need to be done in 30 days and maybe 60 because he does buy a high type of filter that so really is that, really good so we'll do it in 30 he'll do it again in 30 days um and then we'll evaluate from there but we are keeping a close eye on that so mm -hmm. i haven't heard anything um nope. from anyone out there right. seem to be happy to be that. back yeah, I think, yeah, we're working on their end over as far as the uh, Farm Service Agency end for the Busy for season them. is coming yeah. for them, so we probably won't hear from them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, we, and you guys probably received this email um, from uh, Judge Meyer's office in regards to the um, 4D reimbursement. Uh, for general fund, um, they just received that reimbursement for child support services. That was one million eight hundred fifty-seven dollars, uh, eight hundred. Excuse me, one million eight hundred fifty-seven thousand five hundred sixty-nine dollars and twenty-five cents, which was a significant increase um, from twenty-one. So that was a nice letter that you guys received as well. I believe in you had that in your inbox. Yeah. Um, we have the legislative reception coming up April nineteenth. Um, from five to seven. Uh, if you guys are interested in attending, let me know and I can I get we you. We signed up for that. Where's that at? Yeah, um, um, I was just looking at that. Um, Free to attend. Oh, Tamna Falls. Tamna Falls. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're signed up for. And this is the CCAO. Oh, that's yeah. a different one. This is one? the Ohio oh. Council. Yeah. That's a, that's that's the OCCO. This is the okay. one in Columbus. Okay. Yeah, but on this actual this flyer, I don't believe. I have it on my calendar. What day of the week is it? This. The nineteenth is Wednesday. Wednesday. So if you're interested in attending that, um, yes. it's at the Ohio uh, State House Atrium. Yeah, absolutely. I'd like to go to the State House. Okay, perfect. Okay. perfect. Because I think that's open for all electives, like you judges and everybody else. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, I'm not aware of this one. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, and I think that should be it. Uh, I would like your blessing. Um, if Barb has the day off tomorrow. Um, previous years you guys did um, the office was closed we took vacation if that's something that we could do tomorrow um, just close the office we would be taking vacation it's not something that would be paid but um, it's generally a half day or vacation that was previously when we look good back Friday. on so for good Friday yeah no problem here good. Have, have a good Friday yeah <laughs> okay working at my house I'm good you good so we have a couple things in old business Jimmy was the uh, Celebrity basketball game on Thursday? Yeah, last Thursday. Okay, yep. so we missed this. Uh, I got a... And, uh, yeah, <laughs> and so I want to, I, I would have added this to my report, but uh, we had the celebrity basketball game Thursday night. Uh, Jimmy represented the county. I saw you dribbling left-handed down there a little bit. Yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, it's been a while, but... And it, it was nice. It was packed. It, you can't describe it unless you go to it. Right. Is that a good way? It's to heartwarming. I mean, it's just unbelievable. I mean, the the energy in there. The gym was packed. Like it's, it's awesome. Just, and everybody's there. It's just great. So thank you for uh, representing the county and uh, sticking your neck out there a little. It was bit. fun. It was yeah. fun. That was good. Uh, one other item I have in old business would be the airport uh, spray in uh, request, um, and that. I want to get the amount right. It's four thousand two hundred two four thousand two hundred fifty one dollars and fifty cents. That's for two sprays. Four thousand two fifty one fifty. So Correct. we pulled it last week. I I talked to Andrew and Brad out there. I went out actually to the airport. So um, this is for we now have over forty acres of uh, property that we own out there because so, we've been buying up houses and chunks of land. Um, and that is for two sprays. Um, so, you know, you're at like $2,100 per spray. Yeah. And uh, I, th I think it's very reasonable. So I would, I would like to see us do it. Um, the, uh, there's dandelions. If you go out to the airport and you see all the residents, the houses there, we, we own all the property on the west side of, of the road there. And um, so that includes all that. So they don't have to look out at all kinds of crazy weeds. But uh, 
Do we need a motion for that? Is we that have, what this um, this we have a supplemental. Money. It is additional okay. money, so there is a supplemental appropriation on today that you could just go pass we that. Can do in. it. Yeah. So a good part because in the past they they had one spray, I believe. Last I believe year we so. did one spray. I believe so. So if you guys have any more questions, I could try to answer them, but I. Uh, for our own property, we've got to maintain. I, I think we should tell you what material you're going to use and what rate. <laughs> <laughs> spray it well. I was going to ask you this since you have the spray license. And, uh, yeah, so you can tell us. Yeah, what can you buy for twenty one hundred dollars? It just doesn't seem. It, to me, it seems like a fair. Yeah, I mean, if you went to Lowe's and did your yard, you're going to have a, mm -hmm. a couple hundred dollars. That's forty acres. You know. So, but okay. So, do we need to do any action here? No, I think right we have everyone here. Yeah. We'll catch it at the bottom. Yep. Okay. Then the new business. Um, then we'll, we'll go right over to you. If that's ready okay. For yep. We're ready. Something else. I only have two, and they're both out of general fund. Um, one is for the Veteran Services Workers Comp in the amount of eight thousand and thirty dollars. Um, it was just missed on the twenty-three budget. I see it. It was just a line that got missed. Um, and then the other is for um, the contract service out of general fund um, for $4,251.50, and that's for the wheat spraying at the airport. Okay. Um, Make a motion that we accept the uh, supplemental appropriations as uh, presented. I'll second the motion. Okay, roll call. Commissioner Franker? Yes. Commissioner Schuff? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Well, I have. Sure. Good. All right. That means we didn't spend too much money today. It wasn't That's a horrible. good thing, if yeah. you're a commissioner. Uh, okay. Uh, next. Okay. Back to On to Jamie. resolutions. I have two. The first one is a resolution authorizing a fund advance repayment from the Wolf Creek Ditch Fund 1063 to General Fund. Um, that is the amount of $18,082. Okay. I'll make a motion. Second. Any discussion on this one? I can tell you um, that this um, repayment has been going on for approximately four or five years, um, and the after this pay after this is repaid, um, it's a total of twenty four thousand six hundred sixty nine dollars and seven cents that will still come back to the general fund, and it's collected at tax collection. So there will be another one in August. Okay. And it'll be much smaller in August because a lot of people pay full year at the beginning of the year rather than that was a huge year. project right there. well that's we, one yeah that's well mm -hmm. out there. we had a fund and then kind so of commissioners the front of the money yeah. before my correct time. but now and now as it as it's being assessed on their property taxes and then when the property tax um when they do the settlement uh, auditor's office does a settlement then they provide this information and repay that loan basically as well that's good okay we have a first and second any other discussion? Okay, roll call. Commissioner Franker? Yes. Commissioner Schuff? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Next. I have a resolution granting Loudoun Township trustees the highway easement along the west side of Township Road 66. I'd like to make a motion for passage. A second. Beat you to it. Yep. <laughs> Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Commissioner Franker? Yes. Commissioner Schuff? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Any other comments or business between the five of us? <coughs> Good? Good. I think okay. so. Thank yeah. you. Good job. We'll open it up to the public. Uh, floor is yours if you'd like to introduce yourself. Uh, go ahead. Up. Just say well. your name and. Uh, uh, why you're here. Oh, thank great. you. Yeah, welcome. welcome uh, so I'm Lee Wilkinson and I'm running for mayor of Tiffin and I'm doing my best this week to get around and learn as much as possible. Uh, I'm still in the middle of the school year. I'm a school teacher and I'm on spring break this week. So I'll be retiring in May. So I have this short period of time to go to as many meetings and meet as many people as possible. So I'm making my way around to do that and learn as much as I can. Thank you for yeah, thanks having for us here. open and offering me the opportunity. Thank you. I'm glad to have great. you. Anyone else in the building like to speak? Ms. Brad, I found something this past week and I'd like to show it to you. Okay. 
This is good news. I love it. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Got it. Right here, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is the what we're missing. That was what the cemetery used to look like. Wow. Right here. Yes. That's what it used to look like with all with the all broke, these the broken whole, stones. There was 47 stones either broken or laid down. That's when I retired shortly before that. And Nanny Goober, the maintenance supervisor, called me up and wanted to know if I wanted to mow out there. And I said no, but I turned around and did it. <laughs> but there, are, there were 47 stones that were down. If you haven't seen it now, you need to go out and look at it. You have to look these up, yeah. Barb, Sam. Yep. We'll give these back to you before, the, okay. before you walk out. I don't need them today. No, we'll, we'll give them. But this is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I just thought you'd like to see oh. that. <laughs> I, I have to tell you, it's much worse than I thought it was going to be. It was in... in more disarray than you can explain. Yeah. That, that's pretty bad. When I first started mowing out there, yeah. I, that's what I made a point that that was going to get fixed. It took me about five years to get through the past to in and, to yeah. do anything. I kept telling them I wasn't going to go away. Mm -hmm. And then Fred Seller got on commissioner, and the scouts got wind of it, and that was the beginning of it. Yeah. And like you say, now it's one of the nicest and that's ones in the state. Beautiful cemetery in, in Ohio, I'm sure. Yeah, pretty neat. There's a lot of man hours out. spent out there. <laughs> Jimmy, anyone online would like to speak? Yeah, I, uh, I will open the lines now. I put something in the chat, no one responded, but if you are joining us on Zoom and you'd like to come forward and speak during public comment, you can unmute your line now and do that. Mr. Ditto's on. We'll, we'll, we will call on him. He's in. He does a volunteer. Yeah. Uh, you know, I always hated that when I was in school. I would be the guy, who, you know, cross my hands and hope not to be called on. But no, I'm kidding. Since, since, uh, we, since, we, since we pay you, we're calling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. No, thanks for the opportunity. Um, right now, kind of the big news in Columbus is the. Uh, the Ohio House is considering and soon going to unveil their changes to Governor DeWine's budget here in about two weeks. Uh, certainly before the end of the month, they will have kind of their first iteration of everything that they have been working on over the last two and a half months or so. So we'll get a chance to see what they put forward and we'll give you a recap on that. Uh, one of the things that we have been working on with Commissioner Paradiso is, and I know that he's mentioned this at previous meetings, is everything dealing with the uh, EMS as an essential service uh, and even going a little bit beyond that. Uh, we are tentatively looking at doing a call, I believe, Jimmy, next week uh, with the Ohio yes. uh, Emergency Management Chiefs or Emergency Medical Chiefs Association uh, to discuss our proposed language and, and whether or not they would accept that going into the state budget. So we're, we're looking forward to that conversation. That's kind of a, a culmination of a lot of work from all interested parties over many, many months. So we'll keep you posted as that progresses as well. Thank you. Any questions for Mike? Anybody? No, thanks, Mike. Keep going okay. on. Thank you, Mike. Is that, thank else? you. The bells, Jimmy. Uh, seeing nothing at this time. So, for the record, tomorrow, Friday, the seventh, uh, commissioner's office here will be closed. We have a broad county, many electeds, many offices. So it's kind of up to each elected, right, on this day. It's not a paid no. holiday. So everyone understands that. Is that a fair That's statement? Correct. Yes. Um, staff are taking personal days, vacation days, and um, so. Uh, and then our next meeting will be the 20th. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll be here on April 20th at 10 o'clock for our, the next regular board session. Looks like we have a few items on the agenda already. <clears throat> um, anything else? Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you.